remembering Kofi Annan. Let's just hear also from our panelists here this morning uh, how they can uh, talk to his legacy, how he was very influential, especially when it came, it came to humanitarian, of course, fighting for, you know, the, the rights of humans when we are living in a world that, that is bedeviled by a man's inhumanity to man, he stood as a stalwart of human rights. Just, just begin with uh, the Executive Director of Amnesty International Kenya, uh, just remembering uh, Kofi Annan and working in collaboration, of course, the organization with the UN uh, in, in, in light of fighting for human rights violation uh, in, in the world. How do you remember him? <coughs> many, of, uh, many of my Amnesty colleagues um, met, worked with him. Um, some of them moved on to the United Nations. I think it's important as we remember Kofi Annan that we also remember that there are a lot of um, great Africans that currently serve the United Nations and that we should not wait until they're passing mm -hmm. to recognize them, to give them support. I'm particularly impressed, as always, with uh, Amina um, Ibrahim Mohammed, who is a very strong Pan-Africanist and internationalist, and she is uh, very senior within the United Nations now. But I think Kofi Annan will remain probably as, um, for many years, will remain one of our greatest um, diplomats uh, mm -hmm. for many reasons. My favorite uh, Kofi story is uh, how he redeemed me in the uh, face of my daughter. And, uh, you know, I've met rock stars. I've met, um, you call him a diplomatic rock star. He was very far from a rock star in some ways because he was a very humble man, um, uh, very um, uh, self-effacing, did not have a, a huge ego that came into the room. Um, and lit was, lit was literally a listener in many ways. But my daughter said to me, um, and she never said this when I met with, uh, you know, kind of hip hop artists. She said to me, can you get me an autograph from um, uh, Kofi Annan? So I was a bit surprised. My daughter was in her 20s. And I said, no problem. So I actually got an autograph from Kofi Annan. Mm -hmm. And um, later on, I was asked, um, that wasn't part of the uh, diplomatic script that we had agreed before the meeting. And I said, no, no, this one is more important than any diplomatic script I was given. I actually couldn't go home tonight unless I had an autograph from there. And I, I was really struck by how human he was, mm -hmm. you know, um, and how, I, I mean, the word I use sometimes is zen-like, but very peaceful. Um, uh, all of us remember the moment at which the talks uh, kind of looked like they were going to crash. And the man got up, walked out, and went for a walk in Uhuru Park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I've seen a Kenyan politician get up from a meeting that's too hot and just go for a walk in a public space. You know, clear your head, come back to the negotiations, and uh, deliver an agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. That Lucy, was Kofi Annan. Right. Lucy McCurry. Uh, wow. Um, I mean, like I had said earlier, I think it's important to just appreciate um, Kofi Annan for the man that he was, the diplomat that he was. I, you know, like I said, he, he wasn't perfect. You know, there's an incident that stands out where he literally uh, cost a woman her job who ha was being sexually harassed. You know, I think that is something that uh, was widely um, spoken about. So long as you give dedicated service with commitment, passion, and also with a vision. Uh, I'm sure at one stage he determined that he wanted to rise to the ranks of Secretary General, and he pursued did it diligently uh, until he got there. Um, th the second aspect, uh, and I, I think Irungu has uh, really captured it, is, is, is his person. He, he never filled the room. And in fact, if he walked in the room, uh, I mean, he, he had that sympathy, you would see him with this white beard, mm -hmm. but he was very humble. And if you interacted, I had an opportunity, I had the privilege to interact with him a number of times. He, he, he was extremely, you know, humane in, in his approach to social life. But having said that, I think let us also look at uh, his, 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 his legacy. First of all, the very, he was the seventh Secretary General of the UN, but if you start to look at among the Secretary Generals who's left that mark, uh, I think him mm -hmm. is one of those that stand out mm -hmm. uh, with people like Doug Amashold, who died in Zambia when he was struggling to bring the war in DRC to an end. And, 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 and in spite of all these reflections, and I agree with Lucy what he's saying, the greatness of a person is when you can accept your mistakes. Uh, the other day I saw Obama say it was a mistake to have invaded uh, Li Libya. And I think that is to me the greatness that uh, no leader is invaluable. Uh, 
But if you look at the letters of the UN, three things that stand out. He, he managed to bring the UN from being seen as just, uh, uh, you know, a talk shop mm -hmm. to economic circles mm -hmm. when he launched a major program of Millennium Development Goals, yeah. which now have done to become, you know, sustainable development goals. And, and in this, he was rallying the world mm -hmm. to say, no peace, and actually he was able to, 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 to make a very clear connection between peace and development. Mm -hmm. And, and tell the world that you cannot have peace without development, you can't have development without peace. And, and that is how the world then embraced this principle. But also the UN reform. The debate is still continuing, and particularly changing the UN to be more democratic. Mm -hmm. As you know, as we still talk, Africa, the entire continent of 55 states are locked out of the UN Security Council, which is, and he is the one who articulated at that point, he says, if we are going to be inclusive as part of the millennium, we must also be inclusive in our approach. Thank you. But finally, uh, uh, to me, I remember in particular on the issue of Kenya. Uh, I remember when uh, President Kofo came to Kenya and he was uh, trying to nurture us uh, that let's have talks. Uh, we were very reluctant. But when we accepted that principle and really a tribute to our leaders, Finally, he was able to broker that peace. Uh, and it is in that capacity, particularly being in the AU, because that was an AU program, uh, that peace process. Uh, I know we had then to interact with him, particularly facilitating his activity in Kenya. And I remember one time meeting with him when at the AU we were complaining that he seemed to be reporting more to those uh, outside than the AU because. He never came to the EU to report what was happening in Kenya at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there were quite a number of people upset. Um, but he, he, he then told me, in fact, uh, I was just telling him that, look, everybody's upset with you. He, he, he told me a very profound statement. He says, people have accused me that I report to everybody else, but the whole thing, I have kept it myself. Because in brokering peace process, the first thing that you need is to keep your head focused, Keep your contact with the parties concerned. Look at issues that you need to solve. Break them to pieces and come up with doables. Mm -hmm. and, and I have focused on that. And I didn't think that it was necessary for me to grandstand, mm -hmm. to come and report what is happening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's hear from Dr. Khanati. Mm -hmm. About Kofi Annan was an ordinary man with an extraordinary vision and diplomatic prowess. I think outside Mandela, we've not had any other African who's held that stature internationally and even within Africa. Kofi was the moral voice of the downtrodden. Even within the United Nations system in the process of reform, he advanced something that big powers have stayed away from, that is social and economic rights of not just people in the global south, but even people in the global north. This is something that was very testy to a lot of big powers. Uh, their responsibility to protect, which advanced more than any other sector general in the United Nations, it is something that is working today and is helping save a lot of lives in countries, especially when governments start killing their own people. Now, some of the things that Kofi has been accused of having not done very well, a lot of it actually has to go back to the Security Council itself. It was more the failure of the Security Council to act. He was against the war in Iraq, and he was right. We can't accuse him of that. We know what happened. Now, the bombing of the embassy in uh, the, the staff in Iraq, you know, he's accused more by the West of how, you know, as a failure, which the invasion of Iraq was the book of the West that, you know, messed up Iraq in the first place. And so when we look at Kofi Annan, what he did, what we help is that our people and our leaders can learn something from him. He was so such a giant and yet he was so humble in his dispositions. Without him, those tough times of January 2008 mm -hmm. and February, I don't know where Kenya would have gone. Mm -hmm. And so it is something that we hope going forward, even in the history books of our curriculum in schools, we should teach our children some of these achievements and some of these personalities that have come Thank you. to uh, embody what is best right. among us. Thank you. Finally, let's hear from uh, Professor Naomi Damba. 
the well, uh, uh, first of all, I concur with most of what has been said. But let me say a few things. Um, he was an effective diplomat. He was a shrewd negotiator. He was intelligent strategist. And he was the first employee, like uh, um, Ambassador said, to move from employee to become Secretary General of the United States. Of course, representing Africa as the first. He helped. Um, there was a question regarding really the status of UN mm -hmm. that Ronald Reagan challenged and particular Bush uh, 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 threatened to cut funding out of the United Nations. And Anand was able to put all that together. Mm -hmm. Apart from uh, solving our post-election uh, problem. But Hanan also set up a project in Africa that most people don't know. Uh, and it's called AGRA. Mm -hmm. uh, Anan believe in sustainable uh, food security for Africa. And that program is actually headquarters in Kenya uh, with a branch in, uh, uh, in Ghana. But to summarize it all, Anan now joined Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., Albert Luthuli, Wangari Mathai, Ellen Johnson Shiloff, Barack Obama, Ralph Banche, and Desmond Tutu. Thank you. And the hero. Thank you, thank you very much. And of course, we'll be remiss uh, if I don't show you this particular book, uh, a very compelling account of uh, his intervention. Well, as a U.S. Uh, not no, as a U.N. diplomat, this is uh, a book there by Musa Vizade, just giving an account of what really a, a, a coffee and was all about. And I just want to close as we are winding up. Uh, let me just lift it, right? Uh, if you become up back to me uh, on page uh, as we're winding up on page, uh, he talks about the account that he had here uh, in uh, Nairobi. And uh, tucked away at these words uh, on page 191. And we talked about uh, Museveni extensively. And he says, yeah, Museveni called me at the Serena Hotel in Nairobi where I had just arrived. He said he had a peace plan that both the government and the ODM were willing to work with. It was based on their first accepting the results of the, the elections. He then asked me to come to State House, the residence of the President of Kenya, to meet and discuss the plan. I had seen too many ploys in my career to be caught by this. It seemed to be that Museveni and Kibaki fancied a scheme that demanded that all accept the election results and to publicly spin my visit as endorsement of his plan. I made my excuses that I still had to call all the parties before I could make any visits. When I called Odinga, my suspicions were confirmed. He said, there was no chance they would accept Museveni as a mediator, whom they saw as biased towards Kibaki, toward Kibaki. Nor had they been consul consulted on this. The Museveni initiative ended there, and he left two days later. You can buy the book, of course, to get this compelling account of this as a winding up. I really want to thank you, our panelists. We're stuck for time. Uh, we need to wind up here.